worshiping this morning. This week in the season of Advent, our theme is joy. So I'm going to invite the Miller family. Kayla Miller is our children's leader, so she's leading kids on worship uh, during worship on Sunday morning. So Kayla, if you and your family want to come up, we're going to do the Advent writing. And there are three beautiful kids I don't know if they're coming up with yet. Uh, so if you have not had a chance to connect with her, my kids have been having a great time. Uh, and she is going to lead us in our habit. The Lord never promised that our journey would be easy, but we know that we are not alone. As we wait for Christ to return, may we find peace as we come to discover his presence with us even now. As we light this candle today as a symbol of joy, not because we've arrived at our final destination, but because we see the work of God around us and the promises being fulfilled. O come, O come, Emmanuel, God with us.
work that you are doing in our midst. And sometimes, God, we confess we're not able to work. And so, God, we come today before you with open hearts. We invite your presence to fill our lives, to a deed, to do your work. We make room for you, God. God, we pray for this community. We thank you for the things that you're doing. We thank you for the ways that you've been using Crossroads Church. We pray for your blessing as we try to shine your light and what can be a dark, hopeless time. God, we are a people of joy because of the joy that you have given us, because of the grace that you have given us, because of the love that you've given us. And so God, we pray that in these holidays and in this busy season and in these dark nights, not nights, that your joy would indeed sustain us. God, we give you thanks. We pray that you help us to be mindful of your presence and your joy with us each and every day. For you are indeed the Lord Jesus who has come, the God who is with us. Amen. We pray for all this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning once again to Crossroads Church. We are glad that you have chosen to spend part of your weekend worshiping with us before the uh, next tsunami comes or rainami or whatever we're going to get. Uh, you know, it looks a little dicey this week, but hey, we're going to enjoy today. And we're not going to worry about the stresses of the weather tomorrow because today's theme is joy. And before I jump into the announcements, I'm going to invite Rebecca Turgeon to come up to share a joy that she and her family have. And so, Rebecca, if you want to come up to this microphone here, we'll use this one. Uh, for those that have known the Turgeons for a while, they've been us, with us basically since we started the church in 2015. And during this time, God has called them on this incredible journey of foster care. And so she's going to share an update with us. So December 30th, between 4 and 7 p.m., we're hosting an open house to celebrate the adoption of the three kids. And we can be a very supportive week. It's definitely not something you can do on an island. Um, we have been so supported in so many ways. Um, prayers and gifts and meals and uh, the ups and downs of the, the roller coaster. And this was all completely a God thing. And we thank you all for your support. Thank you. Thank you. So we're excited to celebrate with the Turgeons. We know this has been an incredible leap of faith for them as they both left their work, uh, entered into new ventures, entered into foster care, and now are adopting. And so we are looking forward to celebrating with you. I do want to highlight a few other announcements on your chair when you came in this morning. You have a direct mailer. You can be praying for these direct mailers. We're going to be sending out uh, over 8,200, I think, roughly, mailers to everyone at Elk with the Market, Lonsdale, Webster Township, New Market Township, some of Lake Hills Township, uh, uh, some of Cedar Lake Township. And so be praying over those that are going to receive this flyer. It's a simple blessing for this Christmas season. And on the back, you'll notice there is some information about some upcoming events. Of course, we are excited for our Christmas Eve service. That's going to be 5 p.m. right here, uh, candlelight service at the elementary school, but we're even more excited because this week, two gigantic boxes of supplies for our New Year's Eve ball drop, our New Year's Eve ball drop event that's going to be taking place December 31st, Saturday from 10 a.m. till noon. And so maybe you're thinking, you know what, I know somebody that I'd like to personally invite. You can use this card to personally invite them. Uh, if you can't wait for your mailer to come on Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever it comes, you can put that on your freezer. You can go ahead and scan that QR code on the back uh, to go ahead and sign your family up. This is open to people of all ages. Linda, you can come and have some fun and play some games as well. Uh, hang out with the young kids. I know you're young at heart, and so this will be right up your alley. Uh, and so also, if you want to volunteer, there's, you can scan that QR code, and there's a spot to check out. Like, hey, I'm interested in volunteering. I know we're going to talk to the, the Honor Society. If there are businesses in town that want to participate, we're just going to make this a fun, fulfilled event from uh, 10 a.m. to noon. Just have fun together, clean family fun, and uh, yeah, we hope that you can join us. Uh, with that, I'm going to invite Pastor Melissa to come and to share the word with us this morning. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Gordon. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Yeah. I'm excited. 
Everybody feel the energy of Advent, Christmas time in the air? Feeling it everywhere? Sometimes it's like a little, it's like, woo, it's almost a little too much. <laughs> uh, when I was growing up, um, we would take these regiment fishing trips with my grandpa. And if you want to know what my grandpa was like, hang out with Benjamin for a little while. Because he is like, he wasn't born yet when my grandpa passed, but... But my grandpa would take us on these regiment fishing trips, and we would we would fish before breakfast, and we'd fish after breakfast, and we'd fish before lunch, and we'd fish after lunch, and we'd fish in the evening. I mean, you get the picture, right? I mean, he was he was very excited about fishing. The goal was to catch the limits of everything that we could: the bass and the and the walleye and the northerns. And the goal was to have fish every night, and the goal was to bring some fish home and have fish all year round, right? It's regiment fishing trips. Now, to be honest. Um, I'm kind of a fair weather fisher girl. My, my sister, Jennifer, and, and, and Tirza, they're, they're really the fisher girls in the family. They got the patience to sit there. I, I like catching the fish. I don't like sitting there for hours, right? But I discovered probably sometime when, uh, when I was, I don't know, maybe Tirza's age, maybe a little older, that uh, you can catch fish with a lure called a, a, a spinning globe. And I, I decided, a long time ago that the red spinning globes were what catches the fish. And still to this day, if I'm getting a fishing, I want a red spinning globe. My grandpa, anybody else do troll fishing and use this kind of lures? Yeah, yeah, if you're, if you're okay, yeah. My grandpa would make these, and often, I mean, you kind of knew that you'd be getting a few of them for Christmas, right? You'd get your supply that you'd need for, for summer fishing. And, and I was just thoroughly convinced that it was the red spinning globe that was what's going to catch the fish. Welcome to our third week of our Advent series. We've been talking about peace. We've talked about peace in our waiting. We've talked about peace in our work. And this week we are talking about peace in our journey. Anyone else have those moments when you're walking along and you didn't see the slippery little spot of ice on the sidewalk and down you went. I did that once earlier this week, one early morning, and had all my stuff. You know, I didn't want to make two trips. That sounded like work, so I put all my stuff. And I didn't see a little patch of ice on the sidewalk, and I stepped on it, and down I went, and I fell on my elbow, where recently I've been dealing with some tennis elbow. So needless to say, it hurt. <laughs> but I didn't spill my coffee. <laughs> so I considered it a win, right? <laughs> say, Pastor, how'd you get that tennis elbow? Well, let's just say that as much as a hard time I might give Pastor Gordon, it turns out I'm not 18 anymore either. <laughs> and I uh, did something stupid at the gym. <laughs> you know, we have these moments, right? You ever have a morning like that? Or it's like one little thing goes wrong and after the other. Or, or so sometimes I just offer it. I just I don't know about that this morning, right? Or sometimes we find seasons in our life when we feel like one thing after the other hits us. Right? I can't even leave the number of people that I talk to where they're like, they experience one death after the other and their grief is so heavy. Or you just walk through a season of life where it feels like one thing after the other just doesn't make any sense and it adds up and it is heavy. When's the last time that you walked through one of those seasons of life? And maybe you're in one of those seasons of life right now. We go through them, don't we? We all experience them. They're hard. There's just no two ways about it. There are hard seasons of life. And if anyone ever understood this, it was a man named John the Baptist. John the Baptist, in Matthew chapter 11, John the Baptist was the one that they said was going to prepare the way for Jesus. He's the one who set the tone for Jesus' arrival. Well, in Matthew chapter 11, he finds himself in prison. He's done everything that he's supposed to do, right? His life was a little unconventional, albeit, but he's done the right thing. He finds himself in prison for doing the right thing. He called out Herod for his adulterous choices, and subsequently, he's punished for it. And so we get to Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 and 3. It says, John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all these things that the Messiah was doing. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, 
Are you the Messiah we've been expecting? Or should we be looking for someone else? He sends a couple of his followers along the way to go ask Jesus about this. I mean, you can almost hear his words come off the page. Please tell me that everything that I've done, please tell me that everything that I've given up, please tell me that everything that I've lived for has had a purpose. Please tell me, Jesus, that you are who you, who I think you are. Please tell me that it hasn't been for naught. Right? He understood what it was like to find yourself in one of those moments. And Jesus' response is so beautiful. In the next couple of verses, Jesus says, so those, those uh, guys, those disciples of John, they go and they, they find Jesus. And Jesus responds to these guys. He says, go back. Tell John what you've heard and what you've seen. Tell him how the blind see and the lame walk and those who have leprosy are now here and the deaf, deaf hear and the dead, literally dead people have been raised to life. And tell him, tell him about the good news. You know, at this time, the least, the lost, and the left out, the outcasts were pushed out of society. But Jesus meets these people, and he preaches the good news, and he tells the poor, and the least, and the lost, and the left out, he meets them right where he's at, and he says, go tell John. The good news is being preached to the poor. Then he adds, John, God blesses those who do not fall away because it's a beautiful encouragement that he sends back. And right after he sends this encouragement, he turns to some crowds and he begins to teach. And he talks about, look, there's no one greater than John. John was the greatest one. He was meant to be the forerunner of my ministry. He was meant to be the one to prepare a way for me. But then in verse 11, he ends up this section by saying, I tell you the truth, there's no one greater than John the Baptist. And yet even the least person, even the least among you, who find your way into the kingdom of heaven, even your life will be so much greater than John the Baptist. i got to imagine how much encouragement this brought John, how much joy this gave him. Not only had what John done meant so much to Jesus, but it had made a way for Jesus' ministry and all those lives who have now been transformed. And certainly, John would have known the words of the prophet Isaiah. He would have known the words. He would have heard these words that we find in Isaiah 35 that talked about the coming of the Messiah. So verse, uh, chapter 35, I'm going to be in verses 1 through 10 for a little while, if you'd like to turn there in your scriptures, or if you'd like to study that later. 35, verses 1 through 10. Verse 1 starts off. Even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring crocuses. You know, the wasteland is a desolate wilderness, isn't it? It's a wilderness that's been robbed of its beauty. And sometimes we find ourselves in a wasteland in our lives, don't we? Sometimes we find ourselves in places that feel desolate, whether it's sin that we've entered into, whether it's circumstances that we've found ourselves in, whether it's shame that doesn't seem to let go of its grip on our lives, whether it is Satan who's trying to get a grip into our lives. We find ourselves in wasteland. And I love the scripture that says, even the desert, even the wasteland will rejoice. And we see this beautiful transformation, a description of what happens to our souls. When Jesus is the one who comes in. In verse 2 it says, Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. There will be so much joy. The deserts will become as green as the mountains of Lebanon, as lovely as Mount Carmel or the plains of Sharon. These are three particular places that were known for their beauty. You know, it will be like the Hawaii. It will be like the tropical rainforests of South America, right? It will be like these beautiful places. It's going to be transformed. There the Lord will display his glory, the splendor of our God. This is what Jesus does for us. He brings our wasteland into new life. He transforms us from within. And here in verse 3, we see, we hear 
what joy feels like to our very bodies. It says, with this news, strengthen those tired, who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. This kind of transformation is strength to our very weary bones. And in those moments, when the journey is long, it is joy that gives hope. It is joy that gives strength. It is joy that gives life to our bones and our marrow. Verses 5 and 6 go on to say, it's a description of Jesus, the Messiah that we celebrate this time of the year, this Messiah that we've been waiting for. In verses 5 and 6 it says, And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will walk. They will leap like deer. Those who can't even speak, they're going to be singing for joy. Springs will gush forth in the wilderness and streams will water in the wasteland. This is the report that Jesus gives back to John the Baptist. This is exactly what he's done. He's fulfilled the scriptures. And I tell you what, Jesus is still fulfilling these scriptures today. Jesus is still bringing release to the spiritually captive. Jesus is still bringing physical and spiritual to sight to those who want to see. He is still healing those who are ready and wanting to be healed. Jesus is still doing these things. He's still bringing the dead back to life. The presence of the Holy Spirit is what springs us into new life. Streams of living water where there once was a wasteland. Available for you. As I talked about, I, I was, I, I've been convinced that the, that the red spinning globe is the fishing lure of choice. Right? This is what's going to catch the fish, and I think it's because it's shiny down there. You know, when you put the hook down in the, in the deep waters of those big lakes, in the murky cloudiness, this is what they see. The fish are attracted to it. This is how you catch the fish. What would catch you this Advent season? What would pull you out of the murky cloudiness that you may find yourselves in? Are you wrapped up in details? Are you struggling with something this year and this holiday season doesn't seem to make it just go away? Jesus wants to catch you this Christmas. He wants to show you the shiny beauty of his joy. Let him put the hook before you. Let him lure you into his joyful and peaceful presence. And as we walk along this journey of faith, as we travel this journey of Advent season, let Jesus' joy catch you by if it's freedom from bondage you seek, Jesus will give it. If it's physical or mental or emotional healing that you need, Jesus will provide it. If it's peaceful rest and encouragement that you need while well, on this long journey, later on in Matthew 11, it talks about Jesus' burden is light. Whatever you walked in with this morning, whatever you brought in here this morning, Jesus is going to meet you where you are at it is his presence and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that will bring joy to your heart and peace for your journey. Isaiah 35, 4 through 10. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies, whether they be physical or spiritual. He is coming to save you. And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind, and he will unplug the ears of the deaf, and the lame will leap like deer. And those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Springs will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams will water the wasteland. The parched ground will become a pool, and springs of water will satisfy the thirsty land. Marsh grass and reeds and rushes will flourish where there was once desert jackals. And a great road will go through that once deserted land, and it will be named a highway of holiness. Evil-minded people, they're not going to be able to travel on it. They're not going to find it. 
It will only be for those who find this way when they walk in the ways of the Lord. Fools, are they just, they're not going to find it there. Lions won't lurk there. No more ferocious beasts. There are not even going to be danger. Only the redeemed will walk on it. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear. and They will be filled with joy and gladness. You know, and in ancient times, there were specific roads that were meant only for kings and noble people. You didn't, you didn't dare travel on it. You didn't dare trample it and wreck it in case the king needed to use that road. They were, they were, you know, they were set of smart passages. When, when we were kids and we would visit, we, we would visit one grandparent to the other across, uh, across Duluth. This was in Duluth, and uh, and, and we would, my dad would take the secret route. You know, there was just certain roads. There was one little neighborhood. Nobody, most people didn't even know existed, right? You take this. It was significantly shorter than, than the main roads that if you were a visitor, you, you would have taken because you would have known the secret route, right? And God says, it's like a, it's like a secret route. And he invites all of us. All of us are invited, but only those who understand what it means to experience the holiness of Jesus will find this road and will find themselves traveling on it. Verse 9 goes on to say that the redeemed will walk on this road. When you're redeemed by the Lord. This is when you find it. Closes, Isaiah closes out the chapter. They will enter Jerusalem with singing, crowned with everlasting joy. A joy that you just don't find anywhere else. A joy that you can't find outside of the presence of Christ. And we know that it's only the peace and joy that we find in Christ no matter where we are on the journey. And for some of us, we need that red spinning glow. We need something hanging in front of us to remind us the shiny glow, the joy of Christ that can offer us this Advent season. But for some of us, we have the red spinning low. And we've been invited to dangle it in front of others. We are walking in the joy of Christ, and we are the shiny reminder to others, ready to catch whoever may be attracted to the shiny glow of Jesus' joy. I want you to know that there are people out there who are ready to be caught there are people who are hungry to see the joy of Christ this Christmas. And as, you, as you set out to walk in peace this Christmas season, as you bring forth that unexplainable joy that pours out of your life like water in a wasteland or ice and snow and frigid temperatures that we have here in Minnesota, I want you to know that others need what you can offer them. So dangle that red spinning glow brightly and be ready to catch whoever God is sending your way. We are we're all on a journey, right? But Jesus offers us peace for our journey, and it is in his presence that we will find great joy. Let us pray. Jesus, as we, as we wonder as we think about, as we reflect the miracle that you were willing to come here to earth to meet us where we're at. You didn't, you didn't ask us to change. You didn't ask us to fix ourselves. Lord, you said, I will come and I will meet you right here. And Lord, I believe that you are still living out these scriptures today. You still meet us in our needs. And so, Lord, as we come this morning with whatever need we've brought, we bring it before you, we give it to you, and we ask you for your healing, for your hand, for your transformation. And we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to do it. You are faithful to work in us. You are faithful to transform us. You are faithful to make springs and gushing water in our lives that feel, in those places that feel like a wasteland. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In your holy and precious name. Amen. I want, I want to say that um, we 
have a prayer team. We're not trying to just stand there awkwardly. <laughs> prayer team. We, we, are, we are inviting you every Sunday. We are here to pray with you. And so if there's anything that has been on your heart, I want to, as the worship team comes up and, and begins to play, you are invited to come and pray with myself or one of the other prayer team members that are, that are out there before you.
Lord, you make the blind see, you make the lame walk, Lord, that you still do the same things that you promised. So to rest now, we say yes to that, Lord. And Lord, we pray that we would be the light, that we would be that, that lure um, that would catch people's eye this week. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming. Have a great rest of your day.